everyone. Uh, thank you for coming. This is Kyle Epping, and he's going to be sharing his research on sustainability assessment of industrial robotics transition and SMEs. Take it away. All right. Thank you guys for uh, sticking around all day since this is the last presentation of the Capstone. <laughs> um, so, uh, 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 again, my name is Kyle Epping and I'm presenting my research on a sustainability assessment of using industrial robotics in small and medium-sized manufacturers. And my advisor for this project was Hal John. So, to begin the presentation, I'm going to go over a brief outline. Uh, I'm going to begin with an introduction and going around the, back, the background of industrial robotics, and then our, our research questions, and then a literature review of current sources that are talking about industrial robotics and transitioning, and then a methodology going over the life cycle assessments, and then a case study focusing in on the three pillars of sustainability, economic, environmental, and social, and then a discussion on the limitations of this research in future work. And then conclusion. So some background. Um, industrial robotics sales have exponentially increased in recent years. This is due to automated processes and people and the um, overall amount of products that are being produced. Um, in China, South Korea, Japan, United States, and Germany, this has accounted for 75% of the total sales of industrial robotics. Um, automotive and electronic industries account for the most uh, for the consumer market, and Asia is the current uh, biggest for that. Um, due to the increase in industrial robotics, uh, manufacturers are leaning towards newer technology and automated processes. Therefore, uh, SMEs are falling behind. Um, this is due to the lack of capital that they have to spend on robotics, the, the overall expertise, and also not having a comprehensive sustainability decision-making tool to help uh, adopt these newer technologies. Um, so our overall research questions are the following. What is the economic, environmental, and social benefits and drawbacks of implementing industrial robotics in, in traditional manufacturing processes? And then is there a systemic methodology to assist these SMEs transition away from these traditional manufacturing processes to more automated ro robotic manufacturing processes? Um, research questions, again, we want to investigate the three pillars of su sustainability within ro robotic implementation, and then we want to develop a systematic methodology to assist this transition. Um, as, as you can see here, there's um, various literature sources here, and none of them fully address the sustainable parts of uh, the three pillars of sustainability and these various factors. Therefore, there is a research gap that we wish to address with this research. Um, so, um, so our overall methodology for this research um, focuses in on our inputs to, to begin the process due to a production facility being our, we want these inputs originally to implement this implementation. Currently, there are a manual operation and we want to transition them based off these factors, and then the three pillars of sustainability as well. And then we, we also have to consider the regulations and policies currently in place within the social, economic, and environmental assessments already to transition to a robotic operation. And then hopefully this gives uh, SMEs a transition plan moving forward uh, to, and to implement industrial robotics. Um, so, Within our environmental and social assessments, we have life cycle assessments. Uh, life cycle assessment is a systematic set of procedures for compiling and examining inputs and outputs of materials and energy and their associated environmental impacts throughout, throughout the entire product's life cycle. Um, and, and within life cycle assessment, there's four main components, the goal and scope definition, a life cycle inventory, impact assessment, and then our overall interpretation of this assessment. Um, so going into um, developing this methodology within like a welding process per se, uh, we have to consider uh, the, o the overall materials used. Therefore, things like metals, uh, aluminum, zinc, titanium are possible examples of materials. 
Um, and then if we transition to a robotic operation, uh, normally associated through literature sources, it is resulted in a net increase in energy. Um, however, there, there is avoided energy due to the fact that no operator has to be present. Therefore, lighting and heating energy costs mitigate. Um, and then, uh, again, equipment and fixtures, we have to consider like the fixtures and the tools and the machine itself to uh, implement. And then within our transformative factors, uh, we have to consider the current processes currently in place within that facility. Will the line have to stop or will it keep going? And then the overall space availability for a robotic work cell. Um, and then within the scheduling, we also have to consider the demand uh, ratio, I mean the demand to customer ratio when it comes to uh, how many parts to produce and so forth. Um, and then quality, uh, the basic quality definition is accor according to ISO is the totality of features and characteristics of a product or service that bear upon its ability to satisfy stated and implied needs. Um, therefore, we want when when we want to implement, we don't want the product uh, product's quality to detriment from the robotic operation. Therefore, some sort of feedback control mechanism, since no operator will be present, need, needs to be in place. And then uh, another uh, thought is we have to decide what uh, will an operator's knowledge that has been on, let's say, a line for 10 years uh, out outweigh a robotic operation at determining what what constitutes a high quality weld and what constitutes a low quality weld. And then within safety, OSHA requires for manual uh, a manual welding work cell that a oops, that a safety switch, a safety line and guard devices are are, are around the uh, welding work cell. And then for automated uh, guard guard devices Safety fence and vision sensors has has to be around the ro robotic work cell, and then they also recommend doing a hazard analysis, looking at previous accidents from different companies, to see if robotics should be implemented or not. And then another aspect uh, of safety is that you could possibly develop a um, simulation program. However, this simulation program is highly expensive. Therefore, uh, for for SMEs with less capital, this isn't really an option. Um, and then going into our economic life cycle assessments, uh, we, I mean, my research focused in on the overall cost per unit of each individual part associated when we make this transition. Um, and then uh, the biggest contributing factor for labor is the overall operating factor. For a robotic operation, it is normally 80% and then for um, manual it's about 50% and then one of the biggest uh, factors again is uh, the overall arc time basically arc time is the amount of time it takes for a uh, welding operation to complete one individual part and then within our equipment cost uh, within robotic the, o the overall amount of parts that could be produced increases dramatically and then uh, in, in, or, in order to make a fair assessment economically we I mean I had to use an eight-year time value of money and then based off that uh, we resulted in um, it resulted in uh, a fair assessment between manual and robotic operations um, and then socially I had I considered uh, four main subcategories through reading literature sources. Um, a lot of the literature sources focus in on unemployment, human integrity, cyber security, and safety. Um, and then going into my case study, um, I focused again on a welding work cell from manual to, to, ro to robotic, um, gas metal arc welding. Um, here's a typical schematic of a gas metal arc welding system. Um, so up top, normally there is three uh, main wires going into the system: a, uh, a electrode for uh, the weld the welding uh, components, uh, a le electrical tube to to, pr to produce the heat, and then an overall gas line 
for the stove and gas. And then once, once heated, uh, the uh, 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 electrode melts and then forms the weld bead which joins the parts. And then again, for our uh, case study, I focused in on transforming this work cell. Um, and then our functional was a part by part basis. And then uh, our overall inputs, again, are materials and our equipment. And then our plan is to develop a plan uh, for the transitioning from manual to robotic operations. Um, and then we create, I mean, I created this work piece which focused in on um, a basically a cylinder which which would be welded across. Um, this would be rolled and then seamed across using the uh, robotic operation. And then these, these are the various characteristics of this workpiece. Um, and then going back into our methodology with our transformative factors, um, the overall infrastructure considerations um, and this next uh, we have to consider the uh, top operation is for manual and the bottom one is for robotic. Um, per se, let's say that uh, there's an HVAC system that, that needs to be moved or electrical lines have to be moved. Therefore, this is another consideration we have to make when we transition to robotic operations. Um, going back um, for, for, for scheduling, um, with robotic operation, machine ca capacity increases. Therefore, we have to learn how to balance that demand, and this company, hypothetical company, would have to figure this out. Um, and then for quality, uh, again, focusing on that welder's knowledge de debacle, and then just the overall inspection consistency and accuracy of a robotic work cell. And then uh, within the human resources aspect, we have to realize whether or not will we train the current operator of the manual work cell to use the robotic work cell, or will we um, lay, lay that worker off? Um, and then within safety, OSHA um, talks a lot about how the majority of injuries resulting uh, from, ro from robotics is from the overall pro programming aspect. Um, there are a multitude of different ways to program the ro robot. Some, some of them include physically moving the uh, fixture around to uh, produce the part. And then there's always cybersecurity concerns when dealing with computers and the internet and robotics. Um, so going into the results for my economic life cycle assessment, as you could probably note, um, the overall cost per, per part is more for manual than it is robotic. This is overall due to the fact that the number of parts produced per year is higher for robotic than manual. Um, within our assessment, we focused in on, uh, we sort of made, made the assumption that the shielding gas would be included within the electrode because this is what they used to do in previous, uh, a long, long time ago that I didn't realize. Um, and then, and then in labor and overhead, we were under the assumption that the um, robotic work cell would uh, have no operator. And then for our environmental life cycle assessment result, I mean, our, our, for our introduction to this, uh, we focused in on a scope of, of gate to gate. A gate to gate analysis is from the uh, beginning of the production facility to the end of the production facility. It does not consider any, anything before or after. Um, and then we, and then I used the Gabby software, which, uh, which basically mapped out all of our inventory indicators for our various uh, pieces of metal and materials and the inputs to uh, create. Uh, this is uh, some of the inputs I, I use for Gabby. Um, it focuses in on the o the overall amount of elements used within the electrode. Um, as you can see, the overall amount of aluminum used for robotic is more. Um, and uh, for iron, it is also more for robotic. Um, and then through through the Gabby software, they uh, I mean it it generates the following re results. Um, for climate change, it was um, more for uh, robotic than for manual. Th this is due to the shielding gas assumption that I made. Uh, this. Uh, within shield gases, 
it is normally two separate gases, normally CO2 and, ar and argon to, to help reduce the overall slag of the weld. Um, and then within uh, fossil depletion, uh, it, it was more for manual than it was for robotic due to the overall amount of processing time required from manual to robotic. And then for metal, met, met, metal depletion, uh, the overall amount of iron uh, from this slide, as you can see, uh, the uh, robotic was uh, more than uh, manual. And then the overall water depletion focuses in on the uh, overall amount of uh, material inputs, uh, how much water it takes to produce all these various materials that I factored into this assessment. And then here's a graphical representation of all four of those yellow indicated um, re re results. Um, and then going back to those social characteristics that I focused on, safety, social economic, uh, human rights and integrity, and then cybersecurity. Um, based off literature sources, I formulated this result using the United Nations Environmental Program framework. Um, and then uh, basically, the two main when when reading these lit, lit, literature sources it focused on layoffs and then the overall safety of the operation of transforming to robotic, um, and then uh, and and then based off that, I folk the uh, X's mark um, a negative effect from the transformation to 